Although life and time tried to keep us down, we are back for another venture, our second venture in our Circle of Hands experiment. Circle of Hands is produced by Adept Press. If you want to know more about it, there's one or two videos on this channel. You can see the cover, right? That's being held up right now. Gorgeous and exciting and grim book. Yes, there's one or two videos on the channel now about it. <laughs> so, you know, if you want to learn more or go to the uh, Adept Press or Adept Play websites. Okay, so this is grim and gritty Iron Age fantasy, including magic and the swearing of oaths and things. So it's quite compelling play. Now, at the beginning of every session, the game master is to tell the players whose next responsibility will be to select their characters from a pool of characters that they had a hand in creating. And so our players tonight, you can find on the Umbermancer channel, that's Eloy down there, or on the Ivan Mike 1968 channel. And no one can figure out why Ivan named his channel that, but maybe one day we'll crack the code. All right, so today I will tell you just this information so you can go through the character selection ritual. First of all, which region? We are once again going to be venturing in Rolke. Mm -hmm. We are going to be farther north than the last venture. And I'm saying we, meaning we the players, not a continuation of the same characters because you're not obligated to bring those, those folks back. So farther north than venture number one, high in the mountains, where uh, the characters, whoever it is that you pick, have spent the winter. You're wintering high in the mountains in a mountain pass area. That's your approximate location. So uh, you know, a, a mountain pass, imagine such a place. And I'm to tell you the lowest numbered component, the aspect of the venture uh, that was generated first. So here's the background, which you've picked up while spending week after week after week locked into this mountain region by snow and ice, right? There is, in this garrison area, a garrison which has a powerful stone keep in it, which is known as the Oath Taker's Keep. Here, unrest between the peasants, the freemen, and some of the professionals versus the gentry and their more tightly connected professionals has begun to worsen and worsen and worsen. And that is all I'm going to tell you. This is what you've learned while being there during the winter. So feel free to talk amongst yourselves. There's no particular order. Um, <laughs> if you both want to take the same character, I'll just have you dice for it. Or you can, you know, have a swearing contest or something. Are we going to start, like, on the winter or beginning of spring? Uh, just Yeah, I, w I will tell you that information. Winter is going oh, okay. to break while we play. Ah, excellent. Uh I actually wanted to play Ottomar. I don't know if... Uh, I'm between Ottomar and Ingolf, so I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I would play... I, I think Ingolf would be an interesting character to play because he is a peasant. Um, Ottomar's a freeman. We haven't seen either of them in play before. No. I, I would vote for playing Ingolf myself. But. Okay. You're sure? That's You're fine. Okay. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll play. I play Otto. Yeah. I mean, outdoors man would be good in this situation, maybe. Yeah. It's a winter. It's a pass. It's snow. It's Freeman and Peasant. It's going to be interesting. I I will make a change uh, to Otto Marcus. I was looking at his spells, and uh, he had uh, Perfection and Hate and Beast One. 
I think I'm going to change Beast One for Ward. Mm. The Ward spell. Yeah. Really? Just in That's interesting. Yeah. Huh. Well, normally, Ingolf, uh, I set him up with Ward, but let's see. Oh, wait. wait oh, okay. Ingolf has Ward. So, you know what? I'm going to keep the Beast One. We'll, we'll see what we can do because I don't want to kind of like overlap spells. I don't know. That seems. Sure. Okay. Yeah, let's. Let's see where it, where it takes us. <laughs> Why not? What, what does that mean? <laughs> what, what, what do you have in mind? So you've you've decided then. We've decided. All right. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Just want to. This will be my turn to not go have the charm rolls go well. <laughs> right. So, what are the uh, what are the charm numbers? I don't need to know everything, but it'd be a mighty uh, four. Ringo, I have a seven. That's so I'm lovely. not too bad. Yeah, seven's good. Yeah. Okay, now let's uh, let us know about the characters. This will also help you frame your thinking about the characters. All right. So, uh, 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 yeah, you, I, you I go. Guess I go. Yeah, uh, I'm playing Ottomar, also known as Otto. Um, Otto is from Van Berge, not Rolke, uh, and he's an outdoorsman. He's a freeman and a hunter. Um, uh, he is uh, above average strength, not super strong. Uh, not the smartest of guys with a wits of four. Uh, about average charm, I suppose, with that seven. Uh, or, or a little above. I think it's a little above. But what he is, is uh, he is uh, among the fastest of the circle. I believe he's the, the his reflexes are the fastest, and uh, he has a quickness of nine. So yeah. he is he's, uh, pretty fast and good in combat. He is a cunning man. Um, goes for surprise and deception every time. Uh, he is brave, uh, so retreat is not the first option. He is uh, blunt, not vicious or insulting, but he is lacking in social graces. And he has a facial scar. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe it's... Uh, uh, what could it be? Uh, maybe it's a scar across his, you know, across the side of his thigh. Didn't quite take his eye, but it might be perhaps it's a, some sort of beast's uh, tusk or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe a hunting accident is what's what has him scarred. Um, do, do I read the uh, the event or? Um, uh, just skip it because summarize sure the event. I, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, he was a member of a war band. Uh, uh, for the Torben clan, uh, and they were involved in uh, this uh, constant uh, vendettas and you know looking for revenge against other clans and during one of those uh, expeditions they go to to uh, to raid another village and when they get back they find that while they were gone another clan uh, raised their own village uh, mm -hmm. killing most of the people including um, uh, Ottomar's brother um, Gerhold um, no Throthbert uh, his brother is dead and uh he decided, you know, that this cycle of violence uh, would never stop. So he just up and left. That's what he did. Right. Okay. So that's Ottomar, known to his friends as Otto. And let's hear about Ingolf. Uh, Ingolf is a, a peasant. And in fact, he's a farmer. And if the book is to be believed, these on the social strata right above actual farm animals. It's something that you know people will just simply disregard and not notice. 
and uh, which which fits right with his actual uh, demeanor, which is shy, even if everyone has spoken once already. In fact, the only thing that is odd about that is he is a trait or a feature of wearing one piece of bright clothing. It's bright blue, and it's it's to honor his daughter who was killed. Um, who he, who he thinks of, and sometimes it's simply just a wristband made of like a piece of bright blue cloth that you can get it. It, it kind of varies from time to time, but I, I imagine that's probably what he's got on him right now. Um, he is oddly enough even dumber than Otto, and he's not dumb. He is, you know, he's slightly below average wits. Because I think four is kind of the metric for everybody else, you know. So he's so. three. Um, he's charm of four, so he's about average charm, but he's not super charming either. And that probably I always think of him as just being this guy that just doesn't say much in the first place. Um, and he's kind of this guy, like, I always picture him as being a little bit haunted, um, which is part of his key event, you know. And other uh, brawn quickness, he's a little bit above average. He's, he's not, he's no slouch. But um, his key event was the idea that he, he's from Roque. At some point, some black wizard showed up in the area. He's not sure if it was Spur from Spur or wherever. He just didn't know where this man came from. But he did know that soon after this guy shows up, you know, the dead start walking the land. He becomes full of pestilence. And he doesn't know if the the avatar that showed up or the avatar of Emborn that showed up one day if people if it came in response to people's pleas or what all he knows is that the undead were killed it, the, the black wizards seemed to disappear and he's not really sure why it turned on the people at that point but he knows it did and he ran and he's a brave man that's that's one of his traits brave and brutal but but that day he ran and everybody he loved as far as he knows is dead mm -hmm. all right he also, as being the, uh, oh yes, uh, there's two points about him. There's, his name is powerful, even though he has such yeah, a lowly well. position. It's just kind of cool. Uh, but he wound up being our lowest rated member of the circle, right? And so he was provided with a gift to kind of balance that out. What was what was the gift that you chose? Uh, the, yeah, the gift. The gift is it's a gift of memorians. When he, when killed, he recovers fully for the next scene once per adventure. It, it's actually a roll with brawn, so I have to you roll full brawn, and as long as you roll twelve, you essentially come back from the dead. So it indicates at some point in the past, as a circle, my he he crossed the line with memorian and got a mm. gift, but did not get a mark. Not this time. Okay. So then we have Ingolf, who is a peasant, and we have Otomar. So let me double check. Freeman. Otomar is a freeman with the profession of outdoorsman. Huh. Okay. All right. So then, gentlemen, as I mentioned, it is winter. And while we can benefit from things like coffee <laughs> or, or what passes for coffee, <laughs> it has been a brutal, long, early winter, late in breaking. The passes closed before people were expecting them to do so. And this was further worsened by the summer and late fall spent warring with neighbors. There were raids that burned fields. There were raids that destroyed property. There were skirmishes, full on, you know, armored warrior versus armored warrior. All men of Rolke, all men of different mountain garrisons vying against each other over over what? The freemen and the peasants have no idea what motivates their betters. But they are the ones suffering for it. Many of the fields were churned up in battle or burned as a result of the conflict that lasted throughout the summer. And now going through this very long, as I mentioned, early winter, which is late in breaking. Starvation has been rampant. So we can clearly understand that Ingolf is with other farmers. And it seems logical to me that 
Audemars would also Audemars would also be uh, living among the farmers. But I'm open to different ideas at this point. Well, being being an outdoorsman and hunter, he tried to hunt, but I'm, you know, it's a mountain pass, so uh, and it's winter, so game is going to be extremely scarce. Uh, you know, maybe when spring comes, there, there there might be more hunting, but right now it sounds like, at best, maybe goats, mountain goats, and those are herded, right? So, right. Uh, so probably, yeah, he would be assistant with that. All right, so we'll we'll approach our understanding of this region and of this particular venture from from that lens that mobility has been extremely limited. Snow in the passes, you know, as high as a man in some places. There is simply no leaving this basic area um, for fear of freezing to death or slipping beneath the snow or triggering an avalanche and never being seen again. Right. So this is a long winter season with all of the people of the garrison area huddled in their homes around their fires. But due to the battles, there hasn't been enough firewood. There isn't enough or there haven't been enough stores. So as the weeks go by, the rations get thinner and thinner. Parents giving up their meals so that children can eat. And as people weaken in the cold, disease begins to raise its, you know, the specter of its ugly head. And in the warm days, the sunny days, when one farmer might move to another farmer's farmhouse to just check, right? Is everybody okay? Or can we trade some of this for some of that, right? Uh, we have some some preserves. Uh, maybe you have some meat or some eggs. Right? The struggle to keep small animals like chickens warm enough to survive. Everything, instead of being a well-earned rest from three seasons of work and one winter of preparation, right? one season of preparation has become one long struggle to survive. So this is where we will open up. And let's have, actually, uh, Ingolf and Ottomar. This is a farm where there is no sign of life. Barn doors are open. The cottage door is open. There's no plume of smoke rising. And you are there with an old warrior, long retired. His name is Burkhart, which in the lingo of the people can be interpreted as meaning protector. He's obviously lived through many wars. He's missing pieces of fingers. He's heavily scarred, cauliflower ears, walks heavily with a limp, often has pain in the night. You know, he's lived past his days, Burkhart. You're there with him and his close companion, a another old timer, right? You can hear them yelling at each other uh, in their conversations. His He goes by the name of Gurnet. But he's referred to as Spearbreaker, which honestly is what Gurnet means. And though old and retired and living with an old freeman, he has the mark about him of gentry. And so he must have one more name. So you're there. It is winter. The snow is deep past your knees. It's been a struggle just to get here. Farm building is before you. It's one low, long building. This type of building in this region, 
the farmers keep their animals in the main room with them, right? The smaller animals, the barn is, is kept heated for the larger animals who are kept close together, but there is no sign of life, no animals, no sign of movement, no sign of fire. Only the bird song from lower down the mountain in the denuded branches of the trees. Hmm. And these two old fellows, they're they're with us, or they they they're living in this barn or or, or farmhouse or you're the you're the young ones that they have brought here in case there's trouble. But they haven't heard from these farmers and they are going to check. Ah, I gotcha. Okay. How many people were in this homestead, uh, Burkhardt? Well, there was a little one born just near the end of, of the summer. So that would make it six. Six. Mm. And yet no fire burns. Doesn't bode well. It does not. Uh, yeah. And I, and I go go around and just look for any any sign of like you know when the last time animals might have been there. It looks like it's been a long time since anybody's been here. All right, what the, this is your yeah. element, so I won't have you bother with Owit's oh, role. Good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was some effort made to close things down. Right, the barn doors mm -hmm. are open. Uh, it's it's. Hard earth floor has been swept, and there is several days worth of snow blown in. Right. But there hasn't been snowfall for a few weeks. Mm. So you're working within that time frame since the last person kind of set things right. Yeah, it doesn't look like anybody's been here for a while. How long no, was it? His last snowfall. Well, well, maybe maybe a week based on the snow okay. in here. But where would they have gone? I mean, they'd walk six with that many kids. It doesn't matter how many kids; they'd all be dead. That should have left a trail, and you know, even with the the wind and the blowing snow, there should have you know, if six people left together, there would be some kind of trail. And there's really no sign of that. But there is signs of old footprints in the snow, you know, from I the wanna, front door to the well and that kind of thing. Yeah, I want to take a look around the, the perimeter of the house to see if I can spot any tracks like animals or, you know, and see if, you know, if the windows are broken or, or you know, any doors or holes in the wall. So, so right. go once around sure. and, and, and look for tracks, animal tracks or Human tracks. Windows are, the windows are mm -hmm. not boarded, but you know, the, the, the wooden, uh, I can't think of the word I want. The shutters? Uh, yeah, the shutters is what I want. The shutters are closed over it, and there's thin hide for window uh, mm -hmm. behind it. Uh, Burkhardt and Gurnet, old and quite cold, are moving into the front door as you make your circuit around the hut or the, the, the farmhouse, it's, it's tidy. It's mainly made of stone. Uh, you know, there's large barrels for water and, and other necessities neatly arranged. Uh, most of the barrels being empty except for the water barrels, which are of course solid ice. And, and that's it. So let's find out your relationship with Burkhart and Gurnet. All right. And uh, we'll begin with our first charm rolls before they start to speak with you. Are we so one die charm rolls or two die charm rolls? That's the question. Have we been pulling our weight? Well, let's find out. I would like the two die charm rolls with these two, two characters. You're the same social strata and so on and so forth. So. Mm -hmm. I love that look. 
Mm. Please share. Oh boy. Uh, there we go. <laughs> That's a 10. Hey, it's a 10. It's not bad. It's a 10. It's a 10. It's almost a 12, but not Does that mean anything in this system? (laughs) Nothing whatsoever. It does if you want it to. All right. It means something to me. (laughs) Am I getting getting two dice as well? Yep. Even though you're a lowly peasant. Okay, that is a 6 plus 4. That is also a 10. Yes. That's not bad. They like us both equally. Which means to say that they don't. <laughs> so, um, therefore, the tenor of this is quite simple. Um, they're showing you something that they think you should have found yourself. Mm. Right? So, they open the door. So, are you afraid you're going to be attacked? You'd think your your fine senses would have made you aware that there's nothing around us and that if we are here to find the dead, they'll be in here. And if we're here to find it's empty, we'll look in here. And yet you circle around in the snow. Big shaking head from Burkhard. Gurnett keeps his own counsel, but he just gives you the look of like... When I was young. <laughs> so the door is open, and Gurnet gestures grandly. I'm going in. I, <laughs> I'm going in. Otto uh, comes in last and says, uh, may not make much sense to you, old timers, uh, but getting a sense of uh, outside forces is the wisest course of action. When you live long enough to retire, (laughs) then then you can talk to an old campaigner about the wisest course of action. And then they shut up as their eyes adjust to the darkness inside. We'll go right with them. Uh, I'll... Uh, it, it, it's it's obviously dark. All the windows are shuttered, right? Right. So I'll I'll move carefully to uh, to one of the windows and and see if I can I can open it to shed some light on this place. Okay. So we've got the brilliant you know blinding snow outside, mm-hmm. and the the darkness of the shuttered cottage inside, with just thin slits of of light mm-hmm. coming through the thin hide covering of the window behind the shutter. So to open the shutters, you actually need to be outside. But yeah. still, there there is enough light in there for your eyes to slowly adjust. And it's understandable why they are quiet. It's one main room and then one back room for stores and, and uh, you know, to keep some things out of the way. So one side is dedicated to the beds for the family. And there's like a a privacy curtain for uh, what you presume would be the, the, the husband and wife's bed. And then the other side is a multi-purpose area where they prepare food or prepare stores or eat or, you know, so there's a, a spinning wheel in the corner, that kind of thing. But neatly arrayed on each bed is a corpse. The young children neatly bundled together, right? Hands on their chests. Right. And as you would expect, their their major joints have been shattered. Their heads have been neatly severed. They're in their cleanest clothes. Their hair has been brushed, right? Laid out as if for a funeral procession. The older children, likewise. The wife, the same. Although the wife, her arm is missing below the shoulder. 
and it's been neatly tended. Right. So her arm is only one arm crossed across her body. And again, she has been treated so that she will not rise without her intention. Right. And then head and arm across the body of his wife with a knife stuck in his own heart is the man you presume to be the farmer with tears frozen on his face. They are all emaciated, horribly thin. The woman's missing arm, uh, is it, you know, is it, is it an old, old wound that has... It doesn't, it doesn't it, look like it. It looks like it was... It's stitched. Still you know, healing and stitched, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was an injury before she died. We killed them all. Hard times. Maybe he, maybe they died of starvation and he prepared their bodies. The woman's arm, though, is missing. That is, that is, uh, but I don't think, I don't think they all died at once. I think he killed them. Maybe. Couldn't watch them starve anymore, be my guess. So it, would, it would take inspection of the bodies to confirm if he killed them the way he killed himself. Hmm. I'll take a look. I've slaughtered something before. And that is what you discover. Right. The the bodies are horribly thin, bones showing through skin. Of course, they're in a sense frozen and dry. But they have been starving for quite a while, loose and missing teeth and Yeah. Sores, and they they aren't you know they the, they weren't tied uh i mean the bodies have been laid out and they're cleaned i understood yes. you said yes, so there's very... no like pools of blood nothing no, like that nothing like that yeah. mm. i guess there's only one thing to do right now i mean he hasn't been prepared has he no and he must be I don't even say a word. I just take out take out my axe, <laughs> pack his head off, and start breaking his limbs as if it's the most natural thing in the world because it is. Burkhart and Gurnut go outside. Then you hear them chipping away at the water barrel outside. And you also hear the the clatter of you know frozen uh, kindling and tinder. There's no animals in here, are there? None. None. I'm sure, they ate them all by now. Makes sense. Makes sense. The last act of desperation after stores had run out, I suppose. All right. Now, unless there's something specific you'd like to do, I'd like to draw this scene to a close. I know. All right. Days later, weeks later. It's hard to tell with all the time spent indoors and outdoors, right? This winter just dragging on and on and on. I'd like to have Audemar, our outdoorsman, hunting for game. If you'd like to take your companion with you, that's fine, although maybe that's not his, uh, to his druthers. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, do you wish to accompany us uh, in golf, or should I go hunting by myself? I, I suppose I'll go. I, I don't know what I'm doing, but just don't shoot me. <laughs> uh, keep your spear handy, then. Uh, and I draw a bow and arrow. Okay. Now, this whole region of the, the Oathbreaker garrison, it guards a very narrow pass, a very important pass to get to Roque's coast, but now completely impassable. 
the mountains soar high overhead, spires. And what you both have learned, you know, at night around the meager fires are stories of this place where a group of warriors, brave men of Rolke, smashed a conclave of liches here. The circle can be proud of knowing that Rolke has driven such forces from the region, although other parts of the Crescent Lands are still plagued by them. Right. But you can see the shattered walls of their fortress, right, rising up on top of one spire and, and just imagining the labor, the physical labor it would have taken of, of humanity dragging stones up there one by one and cementing them in place under the power of this undead force. This is the, the legacy or the history of this region. Right. But now it's shattered above you, right? overrun by <laughs> wild dogs and <laughs> you know, the, the dried and withered vines of weeds and tangles of, of branches and, and that sort of thing. That is up above you, all encrusted in ice and snow, and the spires of the mountains above, and then the world dropping away behind you, down into the fog and the mist of winter, obscuring the rest of Rolke from your view. And the two of you are making tracks in the, the thick crust beneath powdered snow, so it's exhausting to tramp through it, and it comes up to mid-thigh, looking for something, anything. Right? Your own belts have Move two notches inward. All right. Now, hunting is something that comes naturally to you. Yeah, there might be rabbits, or if we are lucky, although this high up, who knows? Maybe some wild mountain goats. Yeah, it's even one of those dogs. It doesn't matter. I'm starving. <laughs> uh, we'll be lucky. We'll count ourselves lucky if anything uh, crosses our path. Now, I'm going to have to ask you to roll versus 12 roll here. Mm -hmm. And because of all of these difficulties that I've described... Still with two dice, but let's see what you can find. I'm rolling what? Wits, wits. or wits? Or wits. wits? Oh boy, here we go. That is a six, but unfortunately my wits are four, so we're back to 10. All right. Yeah. So this is a scene of the hunters returning with nothing. All right. So you return back to the farmhouse. <laughs> You've. How long do you think you would have stayed out? It's cold and it's barren. There's no tracks. There's thick, powdered snow. Uh, even like small rabbits or foxes would have left some sort of imprint uh, on the snow. Uh, no goats visible on the mountains. I don't, I think it would have been a matter of uh, perhaps force, I don't know, six hours maybe since dawn, dawn to like almost noon. Because you're starving. Yeah. <laughs> it's one more hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, you know, trying to, to exhaust all possible. Hmm. You know, just scouting the area as thoroughly as possible in the hopes that, you know, maybe wild mice or something. We're, we're, we're starting to scrape the bottom here. Whatever shows up, we will be happy. Right. So as you return, Ingolf, 
and Otto, you're smelling the the light smoke from inside the farmer's cottage where where you dwell, and you're hearing the you know the clatter of metal spoon on metal pan as dinner is announced and the small group of farmers move in for what promises to be you know a very unsatisfying meal of a light broth and some you know dried grasses dug out from under the snow and that that kind of thing but this day you are surprised for there is a thin meat stew. Hmm. Hmm. And as it's being ladled out, the, the youngest boy, right, tears on his face, but his father looking down at him very, very proudly as this meal is ladled out. And Ingolf, you notice right away that one of this family's herd dogs is missing. Mm. I look I look over at Otto for a second. I shake my head. I don't, I don't say anything, but um, I go up to the boy and just kind of pat him on the head, on the shoulder, and smile at him. Father beams with pride. I uh, I address the boy and I'll say, uh, uh, "You are a brave boy. Uh, you do your father proud, and we live another day. There'll be more dogs. Uh, winter is hard, but we'll make it through." He flushes a bit. Some pride. All right. Now, I give you your head. <laughs> uh, and we're we're still with with the old folks, or are we in a different small farming community? Okay. Mm -hmm. In the mountains, they use a terraced farming system. So the highest point in this region is the actual garrison, mm. which in your regular hunting route is the wrong direction to go in, right? Uh, they have denuded that area all on their own. So going down the mountain has been, you know, the, the more natural range for your activities, right? So higher up in the mountain is the Oath Taker Fortress, Mm -hmm. and then these different farms. So with an hour or two, you can move between different farmhouses when the weather is good. It takes much longer powering your way through the snow. And descending down toward the valley, you know, uh, Risks, that is still a, a, a risky yeah. proposal. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I I want to go to talk to uh, Burkhart um, and uh, Gurnet. I go looking for them. All right. I, you know, I'll, I'll tell Engulf. Engulf. Uh, I don't know how much longer we can hold out. Let's. I'll go see the old timers. See what they have to say about. Long winters like this. Are you coming or staying? I don't think they like me very much. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay here. You very go. Well. There's lots of work to be done. 
Yeah. <laughs> and plenty, plenty of stuff available. Yeah. So I walk. I make my way over to through the snow, right. looking for the for the older men. I would like a brawn roll versus twelve, please. Mm. Both dice. Yes, please. All right. This time. <laughs> please. Come on, come on, come on, man. One good roll. Yes. On the nose. <laughs> that it's a twelve. <laughs> <laughs> 20 <laughs> because you rolled an exact 12 no. <laughs> <laughs> all right so it's it's difficult right imagine the coldest you've ever been right your you know your sweat is freezing on your brow your eyes are freezing shut right ice is forming in your eyelids and in your beard Right, and the the skin on the side of your head is pulling up so tight because you're so cold that a headache is being driven down the back of your spine. Your head is getting heavier. Your shoulders are getting hunched. Right, this is just automatic body reaction pulling itself together, trying to maintain its core heat. Right, and it's step after heavy step, and you have to lift your leg clear out of the snow and then drive it back down. Right. You arrive at the small, humble cottage that is Burkhart's and which Gurnet, because the winter has been so bad, has moved into with Burkhart, the two men trying to, mm -hmm. to pool their resources together. Right. So as you stumble across them, they are caring for their chickens and, uh, you know, carefully counting them and, and uh, watering them and arguing the whole time. Elders. How fair are you this day? I see you've come with no gift. No. Gain the scars. Hungry, I. Hungry, I bet. Always, but uh, I have I have had lunch, such as it is. I come seeking wisdom. Well, chop some wood, and there's no making it back to shelter, so you'll be staying with us, which means you'll be eating of our food. So. There's much to be done. We need water chipped. We need wood. See to it. I'll, I'll earn my keep. So I go and, and, and chop the wood and, and help uh, gather the, the water and, and stuff like that. All right. The two men are old. Uh, you know, so they're, they're starting to fall behind. Uh, the place is neat and, and taken care of. Um, you know, there and you, there's sign of, of traps set, you know, for small game. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've used some of their, their grain to, you know, and they've set some elaborate traps to catch uh, wild birds. But uh, they could definitely use a hand. And they seem weaker than a few weeks ago when they, you know, full of fire and bitterness and anger dragged you out across the, across the different <laughs> farmland to say, look, people are dying. <laughs> <laughs> New young people are just sitting around eating. <laughs> <laughs> so when my chores are done, I, I go in, in the house and stamp my feet and get the snow off. Uh, wrap my cloak tighter about me and uh, you know, sit uh, in their small room. I suppose it's a one room deal, same as yeah. the other. And I say, How much longer, uh, old man, is this winter? Is this usual? In your years, have you seen it last this long? How much longer can we expect this gold? It's it's Gurnot who answers. 
All life is a cycle. You'll appreciate the idea of a turning circle, I believe. Hmm. And so, like the ocean, like the wind, like the rain, we have days of plenty and days of want. We are enjoying the bounty of winter this season. I see. Maybe next we will miss it. We will pine for weeks of snowfall and peace. If we had food in our larder, if we had our family close about us, things would be different. And what of the lords up at the keep? Have they kept stores? Uh, do they not uh, keep more stores for the people in winter? Or is this such a long winter that they have made no such preparations? Isn't that part of their duty? <laughs> Bernhardt kicks the door open, spits angrily out <laughs> into the into the evening light, and says, "When I was a boy, when the oath takers were in that keep, this garrison was like." He can't think of the word he wants, and and Gurnus just looking at him, just waiting, you know, for the for the gears to connect again. And this region was like the river. From its from its headwaters flowed cool, sweet water, benefiting everyone. But now the water is hauled upstream. If you look at night, you'll see the great hall lit. And imagine the warriors feasting within. Have you seen any lights and any feasting this winter? No. You've heard stories of old glory. You've heard of the Oath Takers and how things used to be mm. if this goes on too much longer i think the lights will be put out in the garrison and gurnut turns on him saying you know watch your tongue that's the kind of talk that sees a man hanging from a tree And does the new lord? No, I don't. I don't say that. I don't say that. <laughs> this is why they don't like you. You keep starting sentences and then not finishing them. <laughs> it might be, yeah. <laughs> but he's blunt. Is the thing. So, so it's like you know what I think. Oh, never mind. <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps. When the weather clears a bit, we'll pay this lord a visit and see if he'll be uh, if he'll be interested in helping his people. But for now, let us get warm. All right, and I'll chuck some firewood in the uh, in the small fire. We'll cut from there to Ingolf. Several days, maybe a week later. Right. Everyone has been out collecting wood, right? At least we can keep warm. At least we have fresh water is kind of the attitude. And people have been able to... Of band together 
you know, this trading of things, eggs for for potatoes and and so on and so forth. And uh, light communication has been running back and forth between the farms and the farmers, right? Lending a hand, people coming over, helping to chop wood, and in return, taking something back with them and bringing news, right? So you, rather than than Otto, are privy to the death toll. Right. Right. So and so passed away today. Right. Uh, grandmother, daughter, father, brother, gave in. Right. So it's this kind of kind of situation. And uh, so we'll open this in the barn. Right. Which should be filled with, you know, goats and, and cattle, but is now down to just one milk producing cow, right, who is receiving all kinds of attention and the milk is being doled out all the way, you know, around the, the ridge line, right? There's many families that can get to heavily watered down. And you come across, you know, the head of the, of the household that you're helping at on this particular day. And he's standing there with his hatchet in his hand and he's looking at his other hand and I swear to God, he's licking his lips. Hmm. Look at him, I was like, don't go crazy, it's not worth it. Just cut that off, what are you gonna do next time? Get your other hand off. Gotta pull yourself together, man. There's no more food. The winter has to break. But even so, and you know what he's going to say, right? Spring is long. And then summer. Right? Spring mean, brings work. It doesn't necessarily bring food. Look at I understand the truth of that situation, so I'm just look grimly back at him. What's this community going to do? Surely it's been this hard before. There were stores before. No petty wars over insults. Over insults? What do you mean? I heard that the battle fought over there in my fields was about our chief Ewald's riding posture. After that, men died. After that, you have no food. Maybe it's just bitterness talking, but I heard yesterday the next farm over men from the from the keep were down looking for food. Really? I'm trying to get a sense, though, of just like overall the um, doing the math. Not that I'm, he's probably the best at math, but <laughs> wondering, uh, you know, what what kind of what kind of uh, you know do do these peasants really outnumber who's supposed to be in the keep? You know, is there or is it all just hearsay? Oh, definitely, they outnumber the people in the keep. Yeah, right. The garrison is just a small. You know, you don't really know the numbers, but. Right. It's not an army. It's a, it's a garrison of to protect the pass. Hmm. 
Hmm. How long does it take to get up there? Have you ever gone up there? I've never been up there. My pa, he he used to deliver. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to remember. You know, I'll go up and you know unload and and come back most of a day. You know, better part of a day. He always used to grumble. Well, men from the garrison go down, that stands to reason. Men can go up. They surely didn't stay here. They surely didn't stay here. Oh, no, no. They were coming to take things back, that's for sure. Why sleep in the mud when you can sleep in silk? And after all, it's what we owe. For the protection? You know it. That I do. All right. This is not right. <laughs> now, more days pass. Another notch on the belt, right? Feeling your own teeth loosening in your heads. All right. More families huddling together. Right, abandoning their own farms, bringing what little livestock they have left. Right. And out, vainly looking for more game, Otto, mm -hmm. you can hear the sound of a child crying. Or maybe singing. Mm. Uh, and I'm I'm not uh, you know I'm not near the 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 houses, so this is more toward the wilderness. Uh, mm. Mm. I look for any nearby tracks, see if they match the. The direction of the crying or the singing. Okay. You find a trail which you'd expect a child to make in the snow. Mm hmm. Right. And at a large rock which forms a, I guess, a shelter, a leaning shelter, one slab of rock fallen on another rock and underneath. Not a cave, but you know, a, a lean-to, a shelter. Inside there is a small girl with a rag doll, showing clear signs of exposure and discomfort. Right, and she's rocking the doll. She's rocking to herself. Right, starved, thin. Right, she's singing a lullaby to it out here in the wilderness, and she has clearly run here from somewhere else. I approach, uh, uh, hello, little girl. She's startled and terrified. There's no Charmed. need to fear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how many dice? One. Oh, Jesus. You start uh, a little girl rocking your doll. Come on. You know, you go. I know. I know. <laughs> it's worth a shot. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, jeez. No. Ten is the, 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 this is like, like Sesame Street. Tonight is brought to you by the number ten. At least you did a little <laughs> eleven. Eleven's bad. <laughs> All right. Well, she has been, I mean, she's terrified. She's terrified. You appear before her. She, she wasn't expecting it. And she's, you know, crawling, scrambling, trying to get away like an animal, right? She's not, not really verbalizing anything. She's barely screaming even. She's just scrabbling, you know, uh, across the, the crusty snow trying to get away. And she's just small, may, maybe seven or eight. Mm -hmm. Pushed beyond her limits. Save there. 
There's no need to fear. Where are your parents? Uh, we must you, we must get you back to your home. You'll freeze here. She's just trying to get away, to scamper her away, to crawl away. <sighs> Leaving the, the rag doll behind her. I, uh, I grab the doll. I take off my. Jeez, it's kind of it's kind of hard. I take off my 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 cloak, and I wrap the doll in the cloak uh, in the cloak, and I say, "Look, she'll get warm. She, she needs you to keep her warm." The child is beyond listening. Damn it. I leave the cloak and the uh, and and the doll by the opening. Uh, keep her warm, keep her warm, and I back. I back away. Okay. I, jeez, oh, I, I, I start heading back in the direction of the tracks to see where she came from, mm. and then you know. Looking back, seeing, hoping to see if she goes back and uh, and grabs the cloak at least. Okay. So, so if if you know whatever happens, you know if 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 after uh, some distance she doesn't come, then I I start moving faster, trying to backtrack where she came from. Okay. So let's follow that that thread. So following the trail is no trouble. It wasn't ever hidden, right? She wasn't being stealthy. But you're now without your cloak. Mm -hmm. So this is your brawn check with just one die. Ah, uh, yes. Because, of course. Come on, this is a good time for a six. Come on, let's go, let's go. But a two is not a six. <laughs> so... Uh, so no eight total. <sighs> okay. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> this is the exposure thing. This is exposure. Yeah. Oh boy! Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. So could uh, you check on exposure, and I'll I'll keep things moving with Ingolf. Yep. Engulf. <laughs> you are, you know, working with this this enclave of enclave is not the right word. This this gathering of farmers, and they have pitchforks, and they have angry words, and they're pointing up the mountain. And Burkhart and Gurnet are there. They're on with many of the older farmers. They're advising caution. Maybe we should send someone to speak rather than going on mass with pitchforks and torches. And, but these people, there is no more, right? The limit has long been passed. Right. We're going to get slaughtered. We're going to get slaughtered. So, um, I hope to Gurna and Burkhardt. And, is there nothing you can say to stop them? We've been saying. I'm not a man. That's what of your point. circle? I see you work. You're a a good man, I suppose. 
many would say. What of our circle? We feel that we should bring justice and retribution. I would go talk with them. I didn't know if they would listen to me. Wish I were here. <laughs> You're a farmer, but it is winter. You're a warrior, but there is no enemy. Says Gurnet. Right. And Burkhart just kind of rolls his eyes. And he says, you're a man and you are starving. Around you are other men and they are starving. And there are women starving and there are children starving. And somewhere there is food. Or nowhere there is food. Well, if they've been down here looking for food, I imagine there's not as much food up there as we think, but I would go talk to them, or at least go see what is up there. And so... So you're in that awkward conversation with people who don't like you. Yeah, people really don't like you. And the distance between you and Gurnut is it's like this unbreachable gulf. <laughs> I can't believe you're actually talking to me. <laughs> so I, I abandoned them. I abandoned them and I, I addressed the other farmers. Say, friends, I will don't don't go up there to be slaughtered. I will I will go and talk to them find out if they can bring a resolution if there is food if they will bring some down will you wait we'll wait a day and what you're looking at is men like yourselves who've been tightening their belts against hunger men whose clothes are hanging off them like a scarecrow in the field. Right. Right. Their faces are gaunt. And yeah, so many, many missing faces from when you arrived. Well, one day. No, I really wish I were here. <laughs> I'll probably die out there without him. All right. In the I'm going to switch I... back to auto to find out if we still have an auto. Yeah. Stumbling through the snow, uh, shivering, uh, uh, and uh, seriously injured by this cold. Uh, 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 it turns out I take the difference. I in my so. role, <laughs> uh, so that's four points of brawn that no. uh, that uh, go down. So uh, <clears throat> you know, I I stumble uh, and 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 as I'm lying down in in, in the snow, you know, I rise up again, and and a bright light comes from my eyes and my mouth as I say. Uh, I will not let these people starve, and that is an oath by uh, Amborion. Uh, so I am taking an oath. Okay. Yeah. And the mountain rumbles beneath you. Right. The trees shake and then go still. The wind swirls around you. And your oath is heard. Ahead of Otto, we can see through the ice rimming his eyes, is the actual ruin of a farmhouse. Mm. Unlike abandoned, unlike neatly shut down, as 
the last member prepares to die, right? Unlike closed up against a time when we can return from the families who have decided to band together with other families, unlike all of those places, this farmhouse has been pulled apart. Door ripped off its hinges, shutters torn from the walls, hide covered windows ripped asunder, furniture shattered and scattered across the yard. I approach in any case, because uh, things things are really bad. And the tracks, <laughs> the tracks are leading from this place. There is a cacophony of tracks, mm. fresh made, probably not today, but within the last two days. The child's tracks were made today. She fled mm. today, but whatever happened here happened before there's blood spatter in the yard on the walls and the bodies of the farmers who lived here you can't tell how many there were only bones are left and they're scattered torn clothing gnawed bones not even little shreds of meat left. The bones licked clean. Hmm. Cracked where they fell. Hmm. I, I... Okay, I do several things. Uh, I approach the nearest bodies and I try to find something to substitute for my lost cloak. Uh... Anything oh, that you blankets, know, if, yeah, sure, yeah, whatever I can, you know, if if not a, a cloak, I'll take whatever is, you know, even if I have to peel the clothes off the dead body, uh, I will, I will look for something to, to all the warm. all the human remains have been stripped bare, mm -hmm. and completely consumed. Nothing left but gnawed bones. Mm. All of their possessions, although they may have been damaged, right? Blankets. Clo other clothing, mm -hmm. uh, bits of leather, they're all here. Mm. Whatever did this came and ate the people with ferocity and no control, gnawing down to the very marrow of the bones. You can see, still see their teeth marks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, th their, their clothing is torn uh, as well, so the dead bodies. So they get. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like they were savaged by, by some wild beast or something. Yes. Uh, at least as far as I can determine. And the place has been torn down. So whatever it is, it seems to have battered broken its through inside. and battered its way inside. Hmm. And as an outdoorsman, you would recognize mm -hmm. the tracks of any bear or large predator that did this. But there are no tracks but human tracks. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Well, well. Uh, no tracks, but human tracks. Human oh. tracks squatting around the remains mm -hmm. that you find. Yeah. yeah. Human tracks at the windows, human tracks at the doors. Yes, yes. Blood and snow dragged into the home. But nothing but silence. Uh, yeah, I'll just take the clothing and... Uh, I don't know if to light a fire. I, I you know, if, if I'm freezing, uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll light a fire. It, it seems like, you know, there's broken wood. I'll try it's to get a die. fire going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's, 
it, it, is it like morning or, or afternoon? I mean, do, do oh, sorry, yeah, it's 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 late in it's it's late in the day, right? So day. like uh, just past noon. Yeah. So Remember should, the day should, goes from sunrise to sunset, so you know it's it's past noon, so it's late in the day. Yeah, yeah. So I should have time to get back. To you could choose. You could choose to, to do, do that. Uh, although you have suffered pretty severe exposure, right? Without rest. Yeah. I'll 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 light a fire. I'll take my chances. I'll light a fire and and uh, you know as soon as I got a good blaze going, I'll I'll lie down in front of it uh, sure. and get some rest. You know, wrapped in as many clothes as I can get. But uh, before. Before I rest, I I will attempt to cast a spell. Oh, uh, yes. I hope it uses will... lots of brawn. Yeah, me too. Really great. <laughs> Not that much. It uses one brawn, so <laughs> I should have just one brawn left after that. So, but hey. Um, it's it's it, it says target is object, mm -hmm. so I don't I don't I honestly Not don't personal. know. Yeah, Not it says yeah. object serves as an alarm to warn its holder of nearby intent to harm or otherwise interfere with him or her. Oh sure, um, yeah, war. Yeah. You can cast it on any yeah. object, anything. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so I'll I'll cast it on. Uh, um. I'll cast it on my on my spear, I suppose, because I'll curl down with it uh, uh, next to the fire, hoping that uh, once I have this this ward up, if if whatever did this comes back, at least it'll give me time, you know, to it'll warm me and wake me uh, so that I can fight or at least try try to fight. Excellent, so, and we'll cut to engulf. And let's make sure that I'll, I'll come back to you to find out how the spell went. Mm -hmm. uh, just a note for future viewers. The reasons why we're moving so quickly is we're on a very limited time frame. All right. I, uh, Ingolf, you have decided you're going up to the keep. Yes. Uh, and no sign of, no sign of Otto. This is bad. Nope. I guess I'll go up without him. Hope he's okay. <laughs> because I have one day. Although it's, it's what time of the day was it when I when they gave me a day to go? Uh, early in the morning. Early in the morning. So then I go, I'll go. And I guess I'm going to go up. Okay. So from you also, we need brawn versus okay. the egg. Sure. Now you have time to prepare yourself for this long trek. You know that is exactly what you're doing, so you'll have your two dice. That's good. That's good. Oh, that's a 10 plus my brawn of, I think it's 7. Uh, it's a 17, which is better than a 10. It's a critical. No. <laughs> <laughs> better than a 10. Okay. So you're well prepared for the elements as you make your way up. But of course, you're using a lot of energy, right? right. There's ice and there's there's periods where you must climb and you know the road. There's clearly a large and well-maintained road deep under the snow, which doesn't right. help you at all. And after a few hours, High above you, you can see the garrison, the Oath Taker's Keep. All right. And what you can see from this angle, from down below, is the, the road or the path curves around. You can see this sheer wall. Right. And at the top, you know, positions for lookouts where they could just see for miles. Right. Anything right. approaching from below anything that was seeking to enter the pass to get toward the coast. 
And in that huge wall, there's this one narrow window, maybe twice as wide as a man, right? Which is filled with colored glass. Hmm. So this huge defensive wall, this opening has been made with a stained glass window. And Did just beyond that. Twice as wide as a man? Twice as wide as a man. So it's a big window. Yeah. Pretty big window. Small for this wall. <laughs> it's gotcha. big for a window. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just beyond it, you can see the, the just the very top at this angle of the keep itself inside the stone wall. And there are signs of, of people moving about. And you can see in the shapes under the snow that the, the landscape around the garrison, around the fortress itself, is prepared for farming. You know, the mm -hmm. same terraces that the, that the farmers below use. Right. Uh, but like any sane people in this environment, whoever is up here, they're inside the fort. Right. It's far too cold, far too windy. And if you yourself don't get in, um, you're going to suffer for it. Right. So I, I'm looking for the, any of the obvious tracks that the people that would come down recently would have taken. And I think I'm going to go that way and then get to whatever entrance they use or exit they use. I'm going to see right. if I can make my way in the same way. So around to the main entrance of the garrison is another hour's travel, right? Your feet are, are numb. Your face is, is frosted on one side from the, from the wind. And, you know, there's a, there are two sentries, right? Each standing outside next to a, to a, a small guard hut. Inside, there's the, the warmth of a small fire of coals burning. Uh, so there's, it's not that there's a lack of discipline. There are guards. And you see them patrolling the walls, right? They look far healthier than anybody you have seen recently. Although, to be fair, not fully healthy. Right. They seem to be taking the winter better. And so uh, I'm going to walk up very um, slowly. I would, uh, I would warm myself by the coals, brothers. You have brought nothing with you. Why have you come so far with no food for your lord? I am not of the village below. I am Ingolf of the circle. Let's see if you can uh, get what you want. Oh, 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 oh. I presume this is one die. Yeah. <laughs> yes, well, it would be a no, but let's see how close to 10 I get. Oh, that would be a nine. Nice. That's really close to 10. It is. Yeah. Okay. So they do not warm to you, and they don't particularly want to share their meager warmth. And they are yeah, just yeah. guards. You don't suggest I freeze to that out here, do you? Let's go inside and speak to your, your captain, your lord, whoever. The chief here, you've been here for many, many weeks, and you know exactly who it is. It's Ewald. Although spoken of far more often, that's E-W-A-L-D. Spoken of more often is his right-hand man, uh, Lieberecht.
Uh, oh, I ask him to speak to Lee that's, He's uh, far that's too life. busy. Go back about your business. My business is here. We have nothing for you to grow unless you can tap the earth with that spear of yours and make plants rise up. And they laugh at their own attempt at, at humor. Okay. You'll get no charity here. Go back among your fellows. Hmm. Really, really just fighting the urge to kill this guy. <laughs> oh. Brothers, I really don't have time for freezing to death on the way back. Let me speak with him. No. <laughs> oh, man, I'm very, very upset now. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to die up here in a pointless fight either. <laughs> I could freeze to death. I could blunted. die, or I could win and yeah. force my way into a fortress filled with warriors. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty dumb. It's like something a person of Wits 3 would do. <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so what are you going to do? I mean, it's... Yeah, it's I'm probably going to... Right. You're, you're exposed to it. They're not going to let you in. It's a long walk home. Hmm. I finally look at him and say, gentlemen, or sir, you, you don't understand. I have I have been given one day to speak with to speak with uh what's his leaving? Uh, uh Liebrecht. Yeah. Liebrecht. If, if I do not come back with some kind of answers, all the men of the village are coming up this pass. And they will not take no for an answer. Ah, well, that changes everything. Come with us, they say. Thank you. And they seem intent on taking your arms in the way that one escorts a prisoner. Hmm. Very well. So they drag you in into the, the courtyard, which of course, uh, with a bunch of soldiers about has been has been cleared of snow, right? There are many plumes of smoke rising up from, from different parts of of the interior area. There are horses that are being walked and groomed and, and cared for and cattle and goats and there's you know uh, chickens in, in coops that are being tended and so a lot of a lot of food evident here right now the the cattle are thin the the goats are you know, on their last legs you know and great care is being taken and and great resources are being spent to keep them warm and healthy but the fact of the matter is that this garrison is sitting on enough supplies to make it through the rest of the winter while the people starve below 
Right. And one of the guards stays with you. The other one goes in into the keep. And after 10 or 15 minutes of waiting, out come two very well-dressed, fully armored men, right? Fur cloaks and fur hats and badges of rank and, uh, you know, jewelry. And they're scarred, you know, they're professional warriors, right? They have bold rank insignia, right, in silver for the oath takers. And they come sweeping out. And the guard is trying to push you down onto your knees. Uh oh. I don't kneel. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. And so the the chief, the obvious chief, Eild, he's filling his lungs to you know to begin this this blast. But before that happens, the other man, who must be Liebricht, leans over and whispers something. And the man's tone changes. He says, you are of the circle? I'm of the circle. I'm Engulf. And the, the look on his face is, you know, disbelief. Why are you here? I'm here to prevent catastrophe. The people in the village below are starving. They have no food. They know you have food here. They are not stupid. And they are starving, they are weak, but they outnumber you. And I told them I would go up here and, and talk to you, but they gave me one day. And when that one day elapses, they will come up here with pitchforks. They may all die, but many of you will die as well. I do not wish to see that happen. Charm. <laughs> one die. One die. And that would be, oh, well, that, my failure would be a seven. <laughs> you failed? I can't I'm believe good. it. <laughs> Math in your world works strangely. <laughs> yes. So neither of these men like you or your message. Their reasons are their own, right? You'd have to get to know them to figure out why they don't like you. Evil's response is to say, look around you. Have you not heard the legends of this place? This is the keep of the Oath Takers. This is the garrison that shattered the conclave. That ruin of a fortress you passed on your climb up here. That is the evidence of our power and our skill. These men did this? I point around to the other other people here. You did this? Ooh. I inherited this command from my father. His blood Dude. flows in my veins. Noble blood. He's like this close to you now. He's just livid. I look at look back at him at this point. I imagine it's red. All men bleed. <laughs> so Liebrich steps in saying, My lord, tempers are flaring. Hunger makes men difficult. Perhaps if we were to break bread together, we could find some way of persuading this gentleman that everything is as it should be, that the garrison must be healthy in order to do its duty, that the people below 
They will make it through this winter. They are hardy iron folk. Descended from generations of hardy mountain people. His compassion is commendable, but his fear is misplaced. Come, let us, let us eat together. I look expectantly at, at uh, hey, well, I don't say a word at this point. <laughs> I'm waiting to be invited to dinner. Or <laughs> thrown, off the, thrown off the cliff, one of the two. He listens to his advisor. And he says, come with me, man of the circle. Gives you a brief tour of the garrison, nothing that you didn't already see. Right. Just walking in. Except he's describing it in places of where people of great importance once stood or visited or gazed or right awarded uh, badges of merit. Right? It was here that I stood when I was promoted to garrison commander. It was here where I received this badge of meritorious service and it, you know, that sort of thing. Mm. And they guide you into the main hall, which at one end has that stained glass window, right? And that window is of a victorious figure holding a sword aloft, standing on the desiccated corpse of what can only be a lich, right? Uh, with the oath taker symbol proudly, you know, and that, you know, lights up the whole room, right? The sunlight is streaming directly through it, just filling the, the room with a blaze of, of glorious color. And this long table and this brilliant white cloth, as brilliant as the snow, is laid. And while there's no food on the table and no scent of, of a feast, right, this is the type of life that these men are leading. They all dine together, right? one band of brothers, so to speak. Right. But I'm going to cut back to Otto. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Otto, so you been... wake up with the sunrise. Oh, my God. With the sunrise. So I slept all through the night. Uh, the fire has died down to just coals. Right? But, you know, through the, the shattered wall of this cottage, right, comes this pure blaze of, of white sunlight. Right? illuminating the interior and the, the grisly wreckage of the lives that used to live here. The light is pure and everything it reveals is corrupt and frozen. I rise and tighten my belt one more notch. <clears throat> uh, you know, um, I... I I I I I get a a a broken leg of of a, of a, of a of a chair or a table or something and I wrap some cloth on it and I fashion a torch from the from the remnants even though it's it's broad daylight I just bring it for the warmth uh mm. and uh I I said about looking around one more time at this place I don't think there's anything else uh, here uh but I just look at the ruins of this place, and uh, then go outside and try to see if I can uh, if I can make out where the tracks lead. All right. Yeah. Well, standing in the yard of this place, you get a very peculiar view of the top of the mountain. Right, just rising in its tooth-like spire. And silhouetted against it, of course, is is the garrison. But from this perspective, the shattered ruin of the conclave's fortress appears to be higher than the garrison. And in the blazing sunlight, you can see the pure stone wall of, of the Oath Taker garrison right, lit up and, and this slash of color bleeding down the middle of the wall. If you give me a witch roll, I'll tell you a little bit more about this farm. 
Oh yeah, that's my my strong suit with a magnificent four in wits. Let's see. Come on, I just need a name. A two d six. That's no, no, no. To oh. five and four is nine, almost ten, which means nothing because I need twelve. But hey, <laughs> arming happened here. You know what? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just wondering if I. That's not endorsement. I can tell you that that uh, the tracks that uh, you were in no condition the night before, right? Uh huh. A a a small band of four, probably five people, came running at this farm. Right? They came running through the snow, right? Falling down, mm -hmm. scrabbling, getting back up. And they just fell on the family that lived here. And mm -hmm. they, they they savaged them where they met them, right? In the yard, in the barn, by the fence, in the doorway, right? Without control. Like animals mm -hmm. don't. <laughs> you know? And they were coming from the direction of the uh, of the keep. No, not from the direction of the keep at all. Oh, interesting. From across the mountains, you know, impassable mm -hmm. terrain. Mm -hmm. No one could survive. Right, that much snow, that much, you know, that much climbing, that much exhaustion. Through impassable mm -hmm. territory, they came. Hmm. Uh, well, in that case, then I'll just, I'll, you know, I'll just start heading back to the, to the cave where I saw the girl fully ready to shatter her bones and cut her head because I know what I will find when I get there. Uh, and then, um, you know, all the while keeping my eyes out for for prey, in the hopes of maybe hunting something. Uh, but whether I find something or not, after I see to the little girl, then it's back to the village, uh, because I have an oath to fulfill. All right. So. Your guess is right as concerns the girl. Mm -hmm. You find her wrapped up in your cloak. At least with her doll, right? But life has left her. So I, I, I will replace my cloak with, uh, with what I took from the, from her, from her home, what I presume to be her home, and I wrap her in it and leave her inside the, the alcove. Right. And, uh, and I, Another you know, for you, please. Yeah. It's not really my place to ask for them, but I think this is the mechanic we need. Seven and 11. Which, yeah. Oh, uh, not 11. That's the worst thing you could possibly roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Almost there. The most boring, boring roll ever. All right. Uh, I whisper uh, to the girl, uh, I shall return when I can and give you a decent burial. But for now, uh, you rest with your ancestors. As and I, I, I lay the doll, the doll uh, b beside her. As you prepare her, right? Um, it's been, you know, it, it's in, been in the back of the, the mind. I mean, you've been here for weeks and weeks and weeks. You've met most of the villagers, which child is this, you know, whose child is this, right? You've been to their, to their home and it doesn't really connect, but still not sure about the parents or, or why you might remember this one, but her name floats up out of your subconscious. Uh, people always uh, just called her uh, little lady, right? Frauke. All right. 
So, you know, I, I, I bid her, I bid her, you know, rest uh, with her ancestors and I, I set back to the village. Okay. Exposure. Mm hmm. But this time, this time, I'm, I have my cloak and I am yeah. on a quest. Yes. So I will three roll dice. That, oh, dice. Yeah. Oh, I, uh, uh, the night passed, so I, I got my fatigue back. Yeah. Uh, do, do I heal? Uh, let me look up the healing rules because I haven't. Uh, let's look at them real quick. Yep. Because mm, I, I, I did I did spend the night so yeah. in warmth, no food or anything, but but rest and with your ward spell, a, a certain sense of safety. Uh, injuries, physical injuries. Recovery rate is one damage point to brawn and quickness per day per missing brawn. There you go. Uh, so that works so for me. maybe one point. Okay. All right, all right. So I'm up to a fabulous three brawn, and uh, the exposure is plus brawn, right? Right, versus brawn. So, all right. So I'm going to use my my oath. Yep. Die. And wow, look at that! That is a thirteen plus three is a sixteen. Excellent. Uh, and mark I the. Take a yeah. excellent uh, six points of Emborion for that. <laughs> oh. Three, four, five, six, seven. Wow, I'm up to seven. Yeah. Okay. Go okay. <laughs> so back in the village, right? Yeah. People are not, not really the village. Back at the farmhouse oh. at which you have been staying, right? All the people have gathered together. Right? And everybody's working and, and uh, you know, fixing things or preparing tools or this sort of stuff. But there's lots of muttered talk and all kinds of looks up the up the hill. And uh, Burkhard is is there and, you know, he's he's telling stories of battle and Gernot is is pacing, you know, back and forth with a very dark look on his face and. And uh, there's small pockets of people who are working themselves up, and there's larger pockets of people who are calming themselves down. And you know. but in terms of, it feels very much like this is everybody, and it's maybe a third of the faces that should be here. So I. I approach. Uh, uh, I approach. Uh, Burkhart, and I say, uh, uh, "Where's Ingolf?" Well, he took it upon himself to deliver a message to the garrison that this farmer's army was about to invade, looking for food. And when was this? Oh, well, that was this morning. This morning. Uh, has he been gone? Uh, He's so, been so, gone since then. It, yeah, it's, it, and it's about noon, right? So it's been, it's yeah. been some hours. Uh, he should be getting there around now, I guess. He's healthy enough. And what is it that you mean to do? All gathered here. Well, charm. Let's see what kind of impression you've made on him in the ensuing weeks. Uh, would it be one die or two dice? Um, uh, I still think it should be one, actually. Hmm. But there's always your oath to consider. Roll five, roll five, roll six. Yeah, let's let's go for broke. Let's. Uh, oh. 
I got a charm of seven, so I need five points. So let's go with the with the oath. All right. Well, why not? Let's, let's You're all ablaze with your. I'm gonna help you. And Boreon <laughs> going on. Oh yeah, this is a. Oh my God, that's six more points on Boreon. <laughs> So it's, uh, but it's a success. It, it's right. a yeah. <laughs> oh, he had a gift in the mark right now. Right in front of oh the very head. Just got being charming. Yeah. So I exceed. Uh, let's let's take a look. Yep. What happens go to the, the excess? Chart. Yeah. When I go off the chart, do I keep the excess? No, you don't. It disappears. Chart yeah, it disappears. Out. Okay. Yeah. So it just resets and then goes to, uh, to market gift. With do you have a mark yeah. or not? And then the, mm -hmm. the gift. Yeah. All right. So when a person gains a gift, uh, any time, remove all points, gain a gift and a mark. Gifts are uh, marks are physical manifestations. The extra points are ignored. Okay. Yep. So choose from the list. Uh, and when you gain a gift, also. Roll 1d6 plus brawn versus 12. Yep. Uh, and my current brawn is 3. So uh, I'm gaining a mark as well. <laughs> You're be sterile. You're be sterile. <laughs> yeah, I am sterile now. Let me uh, first mark. Let me. He's got so much pleasure telling me my other character was sterile the other day. It's sterile, my pal. It's going well, around, I hear. That's what it is. That's what it is, man. Um, well, I know how that was just ended and, here. But we, we have this nice inner silvery glow. So yeah. that's pretty cool. Uh, gift, I need a gift. Uh, I'll let you think about that. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to go back to Ingolf. Uh, but just imagine the reaction. Right? Yeah. Uh, as, <laughs> as, you, as you recognize the trouble and you know, uh, begin to <laughs> blaze within with a soft, innery, silvery light. How much mm -hmm. attention you're suddenly getting. Ingolf. He, he brings you into this room, right? The the entryway is at one end opposite of, of the stained glass window, and he, he ensures that you are the first to walk into the room, right? They're okay. standing behind you. And then they fan out, and he walks the whole length of the table all the way to the end, to the chair that's larger than all the others, goes around the table, stands in front of that chair, and his shadow is now cast down the whole length of the table by the window. And he lets the silence drag out for a moment. He says, come, sit. And he indicates the chair at his left hand. So I walk up and after being uncharacteristically verbose, I don't say a word. And uh, I come sit next to him. He sits and then a light meal is brought. And he <laughs> ate ravenously. And it's <laughs> meat. You're given some kind of like it's a weird cut. Um, definitely designed to to minimize, to maximize the amount of meat that's used per person. Right. right? And it's it's been boiled and and whatnot, uh, some kind of pork, but some kind of pork. Great. So I eat ravenously. Yeah. With that, with abandon, as if as, yeah. as if I'm starving, which I am. Yeah, so I, which you are, and it smells. It just smells like salt, right? Yeah. You know, you're you're dehydrated and you're and uh, malnourished, and so there's this large amount of meat from your new perspective, and uh, not much in the way of greenery or or anything like that. There's some really small pieces of potato, some tiny slices of carrot just for flavor, lots of mushroom. Right. Right. That kind of stuff in this thin broth. And, uh, and the two of you eat in silence, Lieberich watching from, from afar. Right. Yeah. 
Your belly is not full, but you've eaten. Does he finish his? Oh yeah, he can, he finishes his meal. Yeah, and he's just been watching you as you finish yours. It's the first um, first good meal I've eaten in a long time. I sense maybe your your head might be clearing as you recognize the need for a, a fighting man to fight on a full stomach. Fighting for what? Safety of Rolke. The people down there are from Rolke. The people down there are part of the garrison. Their job is to produce food. Our job is to fight. You need a full stomach to fight next year, won't you? Of course. There will be no people to produce any food. They will all be dead. What will you eat then? Will you eat him? I point over at his advisor. <laughs> That's disgusting. You cannot you know be so talking? far from the farm that you don't recognize your place. Farmer's farm. When there is a, a farm to be farmed, farmers come to farm the farm. From where? Where do you think they come from? They're all going to be dead. And you know what's going to happen next? You're going to starve to death, too, because there will be no food. We shall requisition food. From whom? We are the garrison that protects this pass. Your young king, your chief of chiefs, he must recognize our value and take care of the lack. You are the lack, sir. I do not have to sit here and take these insults from you. Now, Liebrecht comes in and says, allow me to take our guest to a chamber for sleeping. He's obviously exhausted and distraught. He doesn't know what he's saying. I am tired. <laughs> Please lead the way. I stand up as if. <laughs> okay. So he guides you to a, uh, you know, just a, a garrison room, a barracks room where you can sleep among the other soldiers. And I, I ask him you know, on the way. Once we've left his, uh, his lord, um, does he really think that more farmers will come when these are dead? Of course they will. You know what it's like. You could continue to toil with grandfather, father, and brothers on the same land forever, or you could answer the call, see more, become the grandfather who will pass on the farm to the generations of your children, not one of many, but first of many. Have you ever been a farmer? No, but I note that you are a proud member of the circle. I am. So you know what my words mean. I know that most farmers are not attracted to villages where everybody died of starvation. It's not a selling point. Farms, herders, hunters, builders, defenders, all have one thing in common, do they not? They must survive to do their duty. The man in there is our leader, and I have pledged 
to his service with my life, my all. He will receive what he needs to do his duty. I will ensure it. If that means I must ride down into Rolke and one by one entice farmers to come to till this rich and fertile land, I shall. I will do anything to make sure this garrison survives. I don't think I understand his point. It just doesn't make sense to me. Sleep. I will come for you later. And I sleep. There's nothing else for me to do here. And right. I wait. I wait for the peasants to show up with the pitchforks. <laughs> ward, ward. Back to Otto. Or do I have to reveal, be our last scene? Do I have to reveal my gift, or if it's obvious? If it's not obvious, you can just tell us later. It's it's not. So, uh, so yeah, but I, these filled with the inner glow of the. Uh, of the raw Amborion coursing through him. So I turn around and I, I look at all the elders <clears throat> and I say, I will not let you starve. I am sick of this dying. Uh, and this place offers nothing but death. Uh, I will go to the keep as well. You're welcome to follow or stay. If you follow, you may die, uh, but you uh, to die fighting is better than to die starving. Uh, I will uh, see this uh, this Lord, and I will I will make him uh, share his uh, stores of food with you. Uh, uh, what say you? Charm, your choice <laughs> if you want to use your oath or not. But I get the two dice, right? Yeah. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Okay, so I would need a five. Do I risk it again? No. Oh, oh my goodness. Statistically, you'll get a seven. <laughs> <laughs> Statistically speaking, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just, you know. That's yeah. important. Uh, well, what are the odds of rolling another six on the on the Amborian die <laughs> in a row? One in six, pal. One in six. Yeah. <laughs> One in six, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, Don't uh, you know what? I don't really care if they come or not. I'm not gonna. Okay. I'm not, I'm not gonna roll it. And that is a seven. Thank you, Ivan, Woo! for statistically significant. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> so I succeed. Yes, that is a 14. <laughs> right. Well, they're coming with you anyway. They are they are suddenly convinced of victory because one of them is glowing. Ah, and you, yeah. you are one of them. Oh, that's cool. You have spent the winter with them, starving, working, struggling with them. That's true. And so up the hill, you march. Some men awkwardly holding pitchforks, some men awkwardly holding staves, right? some men awkwardly holding slings or bows or their work knives. Full of energy and bravado as they begin, fading as they climb. And the last scene of this venture, as you're in sight of the keep, you hear the screaming sound of starving ghouls oh. as they fall on you, as they claw up the walls of the garrison. seeking to tear the hot flesh 
off your living bones to fill their ever empty stomachs. Nice. <laughs> nice. Now, I'd love to play through this combat. I just simply don't have time. <laughs> the session has to end. <laughs> so we will decide uh, what, what I, happens. I, but I, I need I to talk about the tripwires first. Right. Oh. oh, you have you have something? Tell me. No, I'm just the gift is I could shape shift into the silver dragon thing. All so right, so now we know. Technically, technically can fight groups. So yeah. Do okay. with that as you will. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm fine with with making that a the circle survives. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. So tripwire, uh, you avoided the tripwire of the social problem that we had clearly there's this this thing you know between the upper echelons and the lower echelons uh so you avoided that tripwire we avoided it yeah, yeah. The, uh, did i just lead like the army to go get the thing that's fine that wasn't the trip oh okay oh excellent <laughs> <laughs> and uh the tripwire with the with the other things that were going on, uh, a lot of that component didn't really get revealed uh, just because of choices made in play and, and where the focus was in play. Uh, but it seems impossible that you were going to, uh, and basically you leading the, the, uh, the peasants up the hill, it makes it seem impossible that you were going to trip that one either. So I'm going to say that neither tripwire was, was tripped. Whoa. I'll explain what they are in my GM reflections after. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've been doing a lot of talking, and I've been, you know, cutting scenes and moving you around and putting you in places with a lot of authority. So I'm going to shut up now, and with like five or ten minutes, let's talk, or you talk. Mm -hmm. Meaning epilogue, or what happens yes. now? Or uh, I mean, post game reflection. Oh, post game reflection. So we'll lose yeah. the epilogue. The epilogue. This is this all works out well for the young king and for the young <laughs> king. And that this yeah. that this yeah. corrupt garrison was was swept off the face of the earth. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, that's probably what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So reflections. Then, Ivan, you want to go first, or should I? Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. It was it was an interesting session. I mean, I mean, we felt that the felt the time crunch, which was kind of a um, a thing, and then there was definitely this real dismal sense of hopelessness. And I mean, um, it didn't matter to me that like we didn't actually like solve the mystery or or do the thing or or kill the kill the wumpus or what whatever it was. Um, it really just just felt awful. <laughs> you know, it was, it, it, there was a very very human experience to it. Even even uh, you know those, those moments like I, I felt like a few times like I kind of violated the concept of of uh, of Ingolf where he's supposed to be shy but he was kind of by himself and I think he'd gotten pushed past I don't know if I violated it, but he, he felt like it was the point where he would have gotten pushed past his limits and said something to something that was really pissing him off but he, you know he's not well he might not be the brightest guy in the world he's not stupid he wasn't about to get killed up there by the this whole garrison hoping to get resurrected um, <laughs> But um, yeah, it was just real, real bleak and dismal. Like when you really start to realize what's happened to these people, you realize this guy's killed all his, his family. When you realize that little girl's gonna starve, you know, is gonna freeze to death, and you know Otto can't save her and himself. You know, you know what you know what he's gonna find. Uh, mm. Really, you know, you start to really hate these people up in this uh, <laughs> in this garrison, you know, quite a bit, and. Uh, it was that moment, like you know, where to me there was a moment like when where Ingo uh, Ingo feels just helpless, like I mean, there's nothing I can do here by myself. They'll they'll kill me. I won't right. actually accomplish right. anything. Um, and then when I come back to life, they'll kill me again. Right. Yeah. Just nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna be able to accomplish anything. You know. It's one of those moments you wish you wish Kai or Black Hat or you know was there. Maybe they would they would know what to do. You know. To level the place. Yeah. But, uh, 
did you feel powerless as a as a player or as a character as as a character not as, not as a player it was but um there was there was you know there was just the uh it was that the situation was bigger than than me. That that the the weather was bigger than me. That the the stark reality of there is no food. That these people can't really lead a successful revolt. That you know, once I'm up there, I, I can't, um, you know, I, I can't merely kill kill their leader and say, now you must bring the food down here. I I will kill you all. You know, it's not that sort of thing going on. You know, so it's just um, yeah. And you're shaking your fist at the heavens, sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, okay. So from my point of view, yeah. Again, the time compression thing—it's—it's a—it's a. It's a yeah, little, I'm sorry about that. But yeah, no, there's nothing we can do, right? It's—it's it's great anyway. It's—it's—it's it's, it's great to play anyway. So that's not it. Uh, as regards the tone, I think this time we got it. Uh, so uh, definitely this bleakness and uh, uh, helplessness, again, as, as the character, not as the player. There's always something you can do as a player, or at least I, I, I got the opportunity to make decisions, right? So I, was, I, I didn't feel like I was no options, right? I always mm. had something I could do. Whether what I could do was going to be effective in the long run is a different thing, but I... I right. It felt natural. <clears throat> the chain of decisions felt natural to where I got to the point of I'm going now to the keep, as opposed to contrive, because that could have been like the first thing I did. It's like, ah, we'll go to the keep and speak to the guy. <laughs> yeah. It felt, it built up to it. So for as far as I'm concerned, that was very satisfying that it organically arose. Um, once more, I, I, you know, what we what we called in the previous videos, what I called in the previous videos, immersion or in character, right? I felt I was in this character. Um, and I, you know, the, the descriptions were magnificent, the setup of the scene uh, and the situation. I, I, I totally unexpected and uh, a good change of pace. And, uh, you know, it, the description was, for me, it, it was enough to to create vivid mim images, you know, in my in my head. Um, uh, I worry did I do a different guy from Hadrick, which that also has been a like I tried to play to the blunt aspect of the way he talked mm. to bring out a different kind of person. I tried to play up his role as. Uh, an outdoorsman, right? Uh, and maybe that way. I don't know if, if the portrayal of the guy was. He didn't very feel different. like a priest to me. Okay, so that's that's at you least know? that's good. He felt um, like. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So that's a measure of success there, because I was worried. You know, am I doing the exact same guy? Because at the end <laughs> of the day, it's it's me, right? So. It's still me. So it's still me. So how different can I get? Uh, the oath again felt fantastic. I love the whole thing of the oath uh and again it's one of those things where you work yourself up to it there's i there's this you just it's funny because you said the villagers are working themselves up to go up to the thing it's like yes i'm i'm doing the same thing i work <laughs> myself up to the oath and then i work myself up to now we go to the keep and 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 bring this to uh to a close and the the last thing i'll mention briefly is the whole we always talk about you know was was it fun uh, as long as they had a good time, and it's it's what we talked. It's an emotional thing, right? It's like a cathartic experience. It's like an emotional experience. So you know, I don't. It's very bleak. It's very hopeless. It was very sad with with a little girl and stuff like that. Again, it hits. It didn't hit me. It didn't make me feel bad like the last time because I transgressed the line, but mm. that I. I Hit the, the 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 you know I didn't go past the line but I slammed it, my head there's against blood. it and it's like oh wow that hurt you know the little girl and knowing there's nothing I could do uh, I tried my best and, but I knew how this was gonna end so, yeah that was tough to watch that was tough to watch but it was a but it was an emotional experience right, right. which which is another 
Is it emotionally rewarding? Well, it, it was, I don't know if it was rewarding, but it was cathartic. The, the emotion was there. So, you know, we can take that as achieved, right? Mm. Uh, so at least that's, you know, that's, those are the first things that pop into mind. Nice. You know, you know I, I mean, to ask you, Elias, is you got, uh, you didn't fulfill your oath now, did you? Oh, that's right. right well, you yeah. another, mark, another mark of the color. That's true. And, uh, and, and, and you get uh, and, and you actually get a permanent negative one to the, the, the attribute of your choice. Your choice. Oh, second you mark. Don't that. <laughs> <laughs> so let me leave it here with second mark, and uh, I need to take off one for an attribute of my choice. Or we can uh, leave that for the next person who plays them. Right, right. They, they'll take the mark uh, and, the, and the attribute when they take the character. Do you want to do it that way or? Minus one to add. Or you take the sure. attribute and they take the mark. Yeah. I think mark, the mark, is is, mark is a mark. It's not a gift. It's just a, yeah. the second the second stage of the mark. Uh, so so that's the, there's not a choice. Yeah. There, the choice is a gift. Uh, All right. Yeah. Uh, I guess the for for my closing remarks, I thought. Uh, it was it was nice to see you. The word I'm going to say is try, right? This is this is a weird situation, right? So uh, I'm not going to ask you like last time. What were the components? <laughs> um, the, I mean, you know, the first component it was the the trouble in Rolke, you know, um, uh, civic civic tension between the ranks, and it was at a critical point. And the second one, which maybe you guessed at the last moment, is monster. And the monster that monster. I chose was ghouls. I thought it was going to be the demons, the 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 the, the ape-like demons that uh, yeah. that eat and multiply, and that's all they do. I, well, I figured ghouls a long yeah. time ago. I was like, oh man, it's ghouls. So we're so we're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> and ghouls are the result of of. Uh, <laughs> willful cannibalism mm. and so you were with crazy. these people for a very very long time right these people weren't rising up as ghouls these ghouls had been struggling their way through the snow from some other community somewhere else you know in the mountains desperate for for food and the mm -hmm. first hint of their arrival is frauka's right house mm -hmm. yeah and yeah, uh, like she hid like like newt in aliens and then and uh, watch yeah. the massacre. <laughs> right. Yeah. That was, yeah. yeah. That, that, that was one. Of, yeah. Go, go on. Oh, that was that was one of the most not frustrating. That was one of the most the the points in in the in the session. It was when um, when Engel's talking talking to uh, to Iwald, and he's like, "Oh, other farmers are going to show up," and just realizing like how completely oblivious both he. And his right hand man are, are due to facts, and and just it was it was the a perfect um, illumination of just how much the classes don't understand each other, and how they're both convinced. I mean, the other guy has maybe a better plan, but it's still stupid. <laughs> it's still stupid. It's like right. these these men, people don't magically just grow up like the grass. You're yeah. going to start, and you really you're really delusionally thinking that more people are going to show up because they That's they want to. Do they have to serve the oath takers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's unreal. It was meat, some kind of pork. Oh yeah, no, I yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I know yeah. it wasn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the long pig that's gonna be great. Just the fact that the woman's arm's missing—that's wonderful too. Yeah, <laughs> we <laughs> figured that one. Right? Your kids. It's like, oh god. Imagine being that husband, right? Where, where the wife says we have to eat something, right? Take my my left yeah. arm. Oh my god, yeah. And he agrees because he's so hungry, and then the guilt starts eating at him. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Engel's ready to, to to elbow or like sock uh, uh, Otto at one point, where he's like, "You mentioned the kid's dog. Just don't say anything about the damn dog." Oh, there's the other dog. Why are you stupid? Because he's blunt. He's blunt. 
know. He's blunt, I, yeah. I guess, I guess he's yeah. got to say something about the, you know, good job. Good you know, job. Your dog may be dead, but that was a, that was really good job. You know, that, the blunt yeah. people do that, right? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Don't worry, there'll be more dogs. Exactly. <laughs> you know, completely on purpose. Yeah. That yeah. wasn't was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I but yeah, that I that where I'm going is that I once again was lucky enough to roll squick. Yeah. So not grim, not harsh, but squicks like again, really? <laughs> <laughs> so everything's like turned up to 11. So the family that you're living with, their youngest son is, his father is proud and beaming at him because he went out and killed his dog yeah. <laughs> so that the family could eat. <laughs> yeah. Dog. Yeah. Yeah. So the hunt, so the hunter wouldn't feel bad about coming back with nothing. <laughs> with nothing. Yeah. It's like, a, a... <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, and just for total transparency, Gurnet's family name is Ernst. Awesome. Ooh. Interesting. All right, I really have to go. Thank you guys for playing. Thank you. Uh, we didn't, uh, you know, use much of the system. We didn't have our combat uh, this time, but I felt like we didn't really need it either. I don't feel like it's missing. Yeah. Decisions yeah. were. And that's what Ron talks about, right? Mm. There's a point where the decision comes and, you know, you can end it. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks a lot. This was a difficult one for me to put together, uh, which will be revealed in my in my prep video. But I look forward to hearing your recap and reflections videos, telling the story from your character's point of view and, mm -hmm. uh, and you as a player's point of view. And I'll contribute mine as well and talk to you soon. Cool. Thanks a lot, man. Thank Real you. talks. And...